For the ambitious tycoon, the start of a thriving empire is only ever one deal away. In this video, I'm going to take a quick look at Rise of Industry, a business simulation game developed by Dapper Penguin Studios. It's still an alpha, so take due consideration, although the developer has been very active. This is a fascinating and pretty game. The art style is low poly and flat colored, making the world and the moving parts within it look like toys. Yet there's complexity among the simplicity. Each different industry looks different, and you can tell what most trucks are carrying by their shape. The game is a bit like Transport Tycoon, but it's not really in the same genre. Imagine someone else is playing SimCity with four to eight different towns, and you're the guy responsible for coming up with ideas for industries to put in the yellow zones. Except there are no yellow zones. You can put industries anywhere, mostly anywhere. Each city is a single zoning area. After your first zone, which you get for free and houses your company's headquarters, you've got to purchase zone rights to build anything in them. What normally winds up happening is that you put all of your industries in a central zone and then build logistics to get your goods to faraway markets. Logistics here means trucks, trains, boats, and zeppelins. For the most part, it doesn't matter how quickly you move things to market, so at least there's not that complication. The major complication is finding profitable industries to go after. In earlier versions, it was very difficult to find the right combination of industries you could build to make a profit. Many a game went awry when you discovered that your beautiful production chain was actually losing money. That's quite a bit easier now, almost to the point where nearly anything you do is profitable, although of course, some industries are more profitable than others. One of the interesting bits of the game is the asymmetry between inputs and outputs of chained industries. Crops, for example, take 30 days to grow, but each field requires two units of water. Water pumps produce water every 10 days, and each farm has between one and five fields. Likewise, you can place between one and five pumps at the water siphon building. And then there's the distance from one industry to the next. You've got to wait for your truck to haul goods, and you can actually sit there and watch your products slowly work their way to the market. The resource chain is pretty deep. Most production chains start with a few raw resources gathered directly from the environment, like water, sand, fish, or lumber. Then you use that on the next level, like using the water for crops. And on it goes. You feed the crops to livestock, the livestock produces meat or wool or milk, and then maybe there's one or two more steps. But all along the way, you can usually find some place to sell your intermediate goods. You don't actually have to manufacture clothes from that wool. You can sell the wool, or the crops, or even lumber and sand directly. In fact, you can't produce those clothes right away. You've got to research it. There's a lot of strategic choice for what you research, given both the depth and the breadth of the research tree. And that goes hand in hand with the development of the cities. There's nowhere to sell winter clothes to right away. You've got to help towns grow into cities first. The whole thing fits together pretty well, with the industries you can build, research you can do, places to sell it, and the complexity of your transportation network all advancing together. If you're looking for more information on this game, please like and subscribe. It can be found on the Steam Store, and I've got more videos planned for this game.